Hey, Guru Nation, welcome back to another episode of Random Musings from the Clan Controls Guru, all the way from Mexico City, the F. We've got Kate Hemsley. Kate, thank you so much for reaching out to me on Twitter. Kate is somebody who uh, watched the videos, got a job in clinical research, and then tweeted me to say thank you which doesn't really happen on Twitter that often on LinkedIn, Instagram happens more Twitter. I love Twitter, but uh, like not too many clinical researchers use it, but Kate, thank you so much for reaching out. And uh, I think your story is going to be inspirational. And then I also think because you're in uh, Mexico city and Spanish is your primary language. So first of all, thank you so much for agreeing to do this in English. I know it's not difficult, it, it's not easy. If you ask me to do in Spanish, it would be very difficult. <laughs> but in Latinos and clinical research, we're going to do a Spanish one for you. And so we're going to be able to get those Spanish uh, interviews for the Latinos and clinical research. So I'll definitely schedule that right after. But Kate, thank you so much. Tell me. Uh, thank, thank you for, for, for inviting me. Thank you for your videos. Thank you for for everything because as you said before i got a job in clinical research because of your youtube channel so that's very important for everyone who is watching this video because you are doing a great job helping us to to do this to to go into clinical research even as you say i'm a latina so this this area it is new here in mexico here new here in latin america so i think that your job is very important for us Thank you so much. I mean, that keeps me going, definitely. I mean, I am a business person. We have academies, we have consulting service, we have sites, but it keeps me going when people reach out and say, hey, because of your videos, like, you know, I got to start my career. I like it. That means a lot to me. It keeps me making the videos, keeps me going. Um, so, Kate, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Like, what were you doing before? research and then let's lead to the uh, research yes um well i am 25 years old i think i'm very young i got graduated two years ago and well in this time i have been doing social service and uh, professional practices so i got my first job on 2019 in a small CRO here in mexico city but my position was a business development assistant so that's why that, that was the first time that I that, that I discovered the clinical research industry, but not at all, because here in Mexico this year row is small and it is only focused on bioequivalence studies. So it's kind of different bioequivalence studies than the other uh, kind of research, for example, phase two, three, or four. And while I was here working as a business development assistant. I, I started to think, well, what is next? What is apart from bioequivalence studies? Because I know that that is not all the industry. And then I went, uh, then I, I started to apply to other positions in clinical research, in big pharma companies, because I thought that I had the ability to do it. But it was something missing. And it was the, the concept of clinical research, all the background. So that's when I went to YouTube, I found your videos, I just had to type clinical research and your video <laughs> came up. And I, I watched your video and, and that's why I was prepared for the interview once the big pharma companies contact me after, after applying to the position, the job offers. And well, that's why I, I got recently, <laughs> one week ago, the job as a global clinical trial assistant. Wow, so and, that's definitely more of like a, a generalist, right? You go from business development assistant what did you do with business development assistant? Because I love biz dev. That's even now I'm like a generalist or I try to be. I don't think you're ever a true generalist, but I try to be. But like I love uh, biz dev. So like what what was it that you were actually doing? Yes, in, in this position, what I did was to prepare the quotes for the studies. I was in charge of preparing the, the, the cost for, for a bioequivalence study, including the protocol, preparation, submission to EC, IRB, health authorities here in Mexico, what is the cost for the clinical execution, bioanalytical execution, and all the, 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 the trimester file, how, how to prepare the trimester file, and what is the cost for that. That was uh, my job here. But I am a chemist, so it was not at all my, my area. I feel like it is 
it was something it was not for me because I am I don't I, I don't know anything <laughs> about finance or, yeah. or budgeting or something like that. So what I what I felt that it was my thing was the clinical research, the clinical execution, the protocol preparation, the protocol submission, not the budgeting or the cost. My what I what I felt that was my thing was the clinical. It's a good example because even here in the United States, I mean. You, I see this story all the time. People come out and say, hey, you know, I want I have a science background. I want to be a CRA. But uh, right now I'm getting this job as an assistant. And it's sometimes about budget. Sometimes it's just about filing regulatory. <clears throat> it has nothing to do with clinical yeah. <laughs> necessarily. But it's important that you did that because you're going to be adding. And I guarantee you that experience did help you get your job your new job as a CTA? Yes, yes, of course, it, it helped me, but also it helped me to do, uh, to your videos helped me to know the concept because here in Mexico, every uh, in this position, I did that, uh, that budgeting stuff, that quoting stuff, but I also was in charge of, of many other tasks. But as a global clinical trial assistant, they told me you have to be focused on some activities, not all the background that you had in your previous job. You, you, you have to be aware that your responsibilities are going to change, are going to be more focused on clinical research on the projects. You have to forget the, the budgeting stuff, the submission stuff, because we have someone who is going to do that. Also, for example, the clinical study coordinator, sometimes I had to do that, uh, that activities because this is the, the, the company where I was working was a small CRO, CRA, CRO. So I had to do that activities and in this new position, they told me, you have to understand that. And your videos also help me to understand that. What is the position yes. of a clinical uh, study coordinator and also the activities of a, a CRA, Clinical Research Associate, and how to separate that positions. And in this new position, I guess that I will, I, I will have to work with, with both of them. And that's great because I know what they do. And it is important for my new job. It's a step in the right direction. And what... Um... What is your goal in this career? You're very young, but well, what is your goal? Like, is it CRA? Are I Mexico is growing. Latin America is growing as far as research is concerned. That's a lot. I'm excited, very excited for the opportunities in Latin America, especially Mexico. What are you thinking about all this? My, my goal in, I guess, five years is to become a CRA. Okay. Also, I, I would like to go to the CRA Academy because... I think that it's, it's a good opportunity for me. Uh, but yes, my, my goal is to become a CRA. I think that it is, it, is a, it is a very good position and also involves science, involves being there where the, act, where the things are going, where you see the patients. Well, well not, not the patients, but this, the documentation, the CRF and all the, the stuff that are happening. You are reviewing and you are responsible for everything to do it for everything is going as per the protocol, as per the plan. You are the responsible of the of, of the of the I don't know of the su success of the of the project. Yeah. And not only that, but it's uh, people often forget that a CRA. People always assume okay, patient safety. That's really for the PI and the coordinator, and it's true. It is. But what happens when they make mistakes? Well. Mm -hmm. Now patient safety is responsibility of the CRA. And sometimes PI and CRC don't even know they make mistake. And that's even worse because <laughs> then they're gonna duplicate this mistake for other patients. You know, and yeah. if a CRA is sleeping, not doing their job, uh, that could definitely impact patient safety. Forget about data integrity and the quality of the data for the regulatory agencies, but just patient safety. Yes. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Yes, for sure. That's why I want to become a CRA because I like that. And I think that I can, ha I can handle that responsibility and I would like to do it in, a, in, a, in the next five years, I guess. Yeah. So the company you work for now as a CTA, is it a sponsor or is it a CRO? It's a CRO, but this, uh, this position is client-based. So I will work also with the, with the sponsor. Nice, nice. Are they a big CRO or like a smaller one? 
They are big CRO. They... Okay. okay. So you <laughs> yes. can easily be CRA with this company that you're with. Yes. Also, they told me that they have a program to 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 train the the CTAs in order okay. to become them to CRA. Would it? How would that work in Mexico? Because I know sometimes in like I deal with a lot of Canadian CRA and many of them tell me most of my sites are in the united states not in canada how is it in mexico i think it's going to be mostly latin america your sites right if you were when when you are a cra yes here in mexico it's, it's also the same the sites are not here in mexico city they're not in the country I, and the sites are everywhere in this in... throughout the country yes wow okay we're trying to work with uh, with Latinos and clinical research, we're actually tr one of our initiatives. It's a new, co this is a new organization, only it's like six months old. But one of our initiative is to s open sites in Latin America uh, to allow the U.S. sponsors to do studies in Latin America. And we're like, we will be like the bridge. And we've, we already have a few doctors interested. One of them is in Mexico City. And then we have another guy in Colombia. And then where I'm going to be living in Arizona is only seven mile uh maybe i don't know how many kilometer but <laughs> it's like 20 minutes drive from mexico where i'm gonna live mm -hmm. and i already know a lot of doctors there that want to do study too so i think we can you know maybe you might be a cra for one of my sites when, <laughs> when we <laughs> open these sites that's awesome that's really good uh i like to see that latin america is growing with clinical research because like you said it was just bioequivalency but now we're starting to see more, right? Yes, yes, we have the opportunity to, to, to grow up. And I think that it is important for Latin America because many students or many, uh, for example, uh, in my career, in the program, it was not included clinical research. I didn't know anything about clinical research until I started to work. So I think that it is important also for, for, for the universities to include this in, in, in the preparation of, of the chemists, doctors, of everyone, because I think that will be an important uh, step in the future for everyone. Let me tell you, Kate, that's no different than the United States. Uh, you know, <laughs> I know you're probably thinking, oh, in the United States, it's fancy. Everybody teaches research in college. Nobody, they don't do, they have a master's in clinical research but it's mm -hmm. the, it teaches nothing about what you actually need to do as a coordinator or a CRA. It just teaches basic GCP and it, it's meant for people already working in research. That's what it's meant for. It's not meant to introduce new concepts to students or what we're trying to do with Latinos clinical research. We're going to the colleges, we're going in the high schools, we're trying to raise awareness from a young age because most people, no matter where they are in the world, they join clinical research almost by accident. You know, they, they stumble across this, <laughs> like they have a friend who works in research and that's it. There's nothing formal. There's nothing, so there's, it's the same thing here as it is there. And we're trying to change that. We're trying to make a small impact with this with primarily through Latinos in clinical research. But uh, I'm really excited for the, the opportunities that you, you have over there in the next decade. Uh, Kate. <laughs> yes, I, I think that uh, I, I will be doing great in this new position. I am very excited for this. I am. I am why. too. I am. Too. I also sent a tweet because of that because it is, it means a lot to me. Thank you. It means a lot to me too. Let me make sure that I'm following you. I got to make sure. Yes. Okay. Following you. So I want to ask. <laughs> and by the way, your English is amazing. If my Spanish was as good as your English, I think my life would be success, like a success already. If my Spanish was as good as your English is. But Kate, how, tell me about the process to get hired. Um, did you ever get frustrated? Did you ever lose confidence? Tell me a little bit about how you get hired. I'm assuming it didn't just happen overnight. No, no, of course not. Of course, it, it was a, a long way because the first time that I applied for a job, I, I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. And of course, I failed many times. And, and the important is that you learn from that mistakes. For example, the first interview, 
I, I didn't know anything, so of course I failed, but I learned how to how to how to how to do a better interview the next time. So again, I applied for a new job, and again they called me, and again I failed, and I I, I continue doing like this until finally I said, okay, I have done many interviews. What are the most important points? And that's why I, I prepare a, a, a resume, a CV, more focused on clinical research. I forget about the, the budgeting stuff. I forget about my position as a, as a business development assistant. And I said, okay, if I want a job as a clinical trial assistant, then I, then I have to prepare my CV as a clinical trial assistant. I have to say that I can uh, that I can do all the administrative administrative support for the for the for the for the project for the CRO. That I have that I can contact to the principal investigators. I can contact to the site. I can build a good relationships between us. And I have to how to say that I have to highlight that that that, that skills on my profile. Yes. And. That's why that, that's when I, I say, okay, I'm going to do like that. I, I'm going to do like this. Then I got a, an interview. It was the first interview. It was okay. Then the second interview, it was okay. And finally, the, the third interview, when they told me that I, I, I have gotten the job. Wow. So the same company interviewed you three times. Yes. Yeah. It's, yes. The same they, company, three interviews. They do that here too. For, the, for most jobs in clinical research. I think these big CRO, they have the same process no matter where in the world you are. Uh, yeah, a lot of people um, get discouraged. You know, they apply only like one or two places and they say, oh, you know, it's not, it's not for me. You, you, <laughs> you did something that I talk about all the time. You, you took your experience with BizDev Assistant and you tweaked it. You, you put your relatable skills from there into the new position. You didn't just assume that the new employer is gonna understand yeah. what you did. So you have to make them understand what you did. You were talking about trial master file in your biz dev assistant. Well, sure, you did it for a budget, but, but you have to do your job properly. You have to know everything about trial master file. So that's now yes. a relatable skill with your new job as a CTA. If all you put was budgets for a trial master file, they're going to think, well, this person just do budget. But if you break it down exactly what that means, you know, I understood the concept of a trial master file. I know exactly all the components. That's exactly what you need for your CTA job. Yes, yes, yes. Totally agree. And I think, yes, you, you can fail, but you have to keep doing because otherwise you do doing what you well, you will not get anything. You need to do it. And yes, I got frustrated. Yes, I cried sometimes. Yes, I thought that it was not for me. I thought I will be a business development assistant all my life. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but after that, when you, when you take a minute and say, okay, I will do this again, but with different things. I will focus on, on other things. You can do it. I, I, it's difficult. It's, I, would, I have to say that it's not easy. You just not apply and they called you and said, you have the job with this big company and with all these benefits. No, it's not like that. You have to wait, you have to learn and you have to keep doing no matter what, no matter how much difficult you think it is, the opportunity will come. That's for sure. But you have to be prepared for that and you have to, to get that opportunity. You can just sit and say, I will wait for the opportunity because it, the world doesn't work like that. You have to go for it. That's my advice for everyone who is looking for a job in this, in this industry. You have to keep doing. And it has to be more than just, like you have to have a real passion for research. Uh, like in your case, you said you're a chemist by training, by education. So you, you obviously had that passion. You even said in the interview, you know, I, I knew I wanted to be on the clinical side, not just doing budgets or paperwork. I wanted to be involved on the clinical side. So you like, I think it, it, what's missing from a lot of people is when they don't have the proper passion, they give up because, you know, it takes a lot of work to go through this process. It doesn't that easy. And if you're missing that passion, if it's just about money, you know, people think CRA because they make a lot of money. So I want to yeah. be a CRA. 
But okay, but to get to that point, you have to be passionate about something within research. And in order to get through those rejections, you know, even for you, you get way more rejection than you get people that say yes. But all you need is one. Guarantee you now, if you do this for five years, even less, even two years, nobody is going to say no anymore because there's a shortage of CRA. There's a shortage of everything in the industry, whether you're in Mexico or Nigeria or United States, doesn't matter. Yes, uh, it's important that, that you have that passion for this topic because the money, yes, it's important, but 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 people will will know. I don't know how to say that. People know when you are not working for passion, when you are working only for money. That's yeah. something that people know. People feel that, and yes. when they feel that, they say he's not interested or she's not interested in this job. She's going to quit in any time when when she or he. Uh, have a new position they, they will quit so don't cons please don't consider them and when you show that passion when you said i want to be here because i like research because i would like to be a cta because i like this industry and i want to build a good career in this they know it and they and, and they can feel it they can they can see it and that's when they say okay bring her okay give it give her, give her the opportunity because she really won. Also, that's why I think that, that that was something that happened to me in the interview. In the interview. I when I was talking about, about about what was expecting to be a CTA, about my expectations, about about how how my new position will be. I think that I did it with with this with this energy, with this uh, with this kind of of emotion, with this passion, and they and they realized that. So yes. I think that it was also because, uh, and they, and I, I think that they also give me the job because of that, because uh, I will not quit in three months or in the first month I will say, this a lot for me, I can do it, so bye, I will quit. I will start <laughs> another job. No, I think that, they, that, that they see that I will not quit this easily. It's especially true for young people um, who maybe sometimes are more naive with what they, they think clinical research is something and then when they the interviewer is always going to ask them hey do you realize you know this this job is not about well, like what you think it's going to be this is going to be trial master file filing you're not in a lab making experiments you know <laughs> so a lot of especially the young people they have a misalignment of or a dislocation of what is their ideal versus what is the reality of the job so I think you did a very good uh, job in the sense that you were able to communicate that effectively and and then obviously being young has uh, advantages because they know that you're going to be you're just getting started so they would <laughs> love to have you you know work for them and climb up the ladder within their organization because good people are hard to find yes I, I also was afraid of that because I am too young and I thought maybe they want people with more experience that I don't have so how to how to how to how to do how to make it how to combine them that I am a good option how to do that and you do that in the interview and when you yeah. prepare your CV when you prepare your interview people are always concerned I'm too young I'm too old I'm too middle-aged it doesn't matter this doesn't matter you have your advantages you know and obviously you talk about that Obviously, you have your disadvantages. You don't talk about that. They already know. But you talk about what you're good at and your passion. And I think that's exactly what you did. It's going to be a lot of fun, Kate, <laughs> to do this on Latinos in Clinical Research YouTube channel in Spanish. By the way, we need more subscribers to latinosinclinicalresearch.com and the YouTube channel. So go make sure you subscribe. The link is underneath this video as well. The link to Kate's LinkedIn is <laughs> underneath this video. Go network with her. And then we're going to feature her on Latinos Clunka Research in Spanish. It's going to be awesome. And uh, thank you very much, Kate. Anything else uh, you want to say for the viewers, listeners, watch, mm -hmm. watchers? No, I think that I can, uh, I, I, I can say that please go to YouTube, watch your videos of that. Please uh, prepare yourself. Please, please keep doing. Please don't stop and I think that this industry is going to to grow to this industry is growing up and we have to be part of that 
we uh, as, as, a, the, as the new generation, we as the young people, we have to do, you have to be part of that. That's right. I 100% agree. Uh, and please go to Kate's LinkedIn and connect <laughs> with her. Okay, so thank you, Kate. I really appreciate it. Uh, and then we're looking forward to feature you soon. I'll send an email uh, to the rest of the team. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. And we'll catch you all later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.